A lot of times I've started videos by telling you how much the player meant to me, how much I loved them when I was younger and overall just positive stuff, but not this time. If there was one man I hated as a kid, it was Bastian Schweinsteiger. And before you go and dislike the video, hear me out for a second. I was a child, so the reason for all this hate is simple. This man always scored against the Portuguese national team, which was even more infuriating considering that the barely broke the 100 goal mark over his career, but of course, now that I'm all grown up, I don't hate the guy. Honestly, when I hear his name, I just feel a weird sort of respect since I know from my own experience how devastating it could be, so yeah. Now that I gave you an inside look at how Schweinsteiger traumatized my younger self, let's get into it. So, I've developed a conspiracy theory of sorts. If you go and look at his birthday, you can see that he was born in the summer of the Euro 1984, a tournament in which Portugal ended up knocking out Germany in the group stage, which can only lead to one plausible conclusion. This man had to be genetically engineered to seek revenge, and I will not allow any other justification. Okay, but for real, I I'm done with the jokes. Bastian was born in Kalbermoor, and as a little boy he was very involved in all kinds of sports. Oddly enough, he would actually even get really invested in skiing, but football would not cross his path for a while until his younger brother took on the sport and started excelling from the get-go, leaving Bastian craving for the same sort of fun and attention his brother was getting. And of course, soon enough he would give up skiing and join a football team. Over the next 8 years, not much would happen to be honest, the boy steadily improved until at 14 years of age not only him but also his brother would get noticed by a scout and both joined Bayern, and as much as Bastian caused much more of an impact, his brother Tobias did manage to get some playing time for the Bayern reserve squad in 2012, and well, kind of a fun fact, he would actually end his professional career with more goals scored than his brother, though you might have to take some points from him considering that he scored most of them in the third division. But getting back on topic, once established at Bayern, Bastian would start getting talked about for two reasons. His immense displays for the Bayern reserve squad and for, well, getting into trouble constantly outside the pitch. You know, the regular stuff, it's not like his antics were on, let's say, Balotelli's level, but he did get some excessive speeding, some outrageous haircuts, late night partying before games, you know the drill. Uh, but I did actually find one story um, though it would only happen further into his time at Bayern, where he smuggled his girlfriend into the team's grounds so they could use the jacuzzi and once they were caught he claimed she was his cousin, which honestly considering what I assumed them to be doing there might just make it worse. At 18 years of age, he would get his debut for the main team, regardless of all this craziness, and it would be notorious for several reasons. It would be a Champions League match, he would actually play as a left back, and even managed to assist a goal despite not being given many minutes, and he would also share his debut with another Bayern youngster whose name you might recognize. It was Philip Lam. Despite getting very little playing time over the rest of the season, he would get to have both the Bundesliga and the German Cup to his resume. The following season would be the exact opposite, as Bastian would get far more playing time but would not win a single title. Regardless, there would be a silver lining in the summer as he would get called up to the Euro 2004, his first ever international tournament with Germany. Sadly, they wouldn't win a single game and would be out of the tournament in a group stage. The following two seasons would be a weird back and forth with Schweinsteiger even being sent back to the reserves temporarily despite eventually coming back and finally starting to assert himself as an indispensable player for Bayern. Still, looking at the bright side, he did manage to earn himself another two of his match against Portugal, scoring two incredible long-range efforts before taking the free kick that would lead to Portugal's own goal to make it three for Germany as they took the bronze medal. Back at Munich, something has to be said. For a while, his club career would not be too exciting, just a regular Bayern domination over the German domestic competitions, but on the other end, the international tournaments with Germany would keep being entertaining. At the Euro 2008, besides once again, of course, knocking out Portugal with a goal by Schweinsteiger, it would be him once again that would score to take Germany to the final. But there, it was a completely different story. The Spanish national team would be absolutely incredible and Germany would not manage to go any further, as Fernando Torres put Spain in front early on. 
and to further break Schweinsteiger's heart, a bit more than a year after he would witness first end as Bayern made it to the final of the Champions League, only to lose to José Mourinho's Inter Milan, as much as this team did not necessarily play the most aesthetically pleasing football, their spirit of sacrifice and cohesion proved strong enough to beat even the best teams the world had to offer at the moment. And in that year's World Cup, Germany would for the second consecutive time finish in third place, failing in the semi-finals to none other than Spain once again. Regardless, the consistency shown by Schweinsteiger would be rewarded as by the end of the year, it would earn its first Ballon d'Or nomination. Following one unremarkable season, of course, there would be nothing else but more heartbreak coming Schweinsteiger's way. First managing to get revenge on Mourinho, helping Bayern to break through and beat Mourinho's Real Madrid on the penalty shootout as it would be Schweinsteiger himself converting the decisive penalty. But unfortunately, the end of this fairy tale wouldn't be so wonderful, at least not to Bayern, as Chelsea would against all odds beat them in the final of the Champions League. At this point, if anyone needed a change of luck, it was clearly Bastian. His career seemed to be depleting every season as he was now 28 years old, a few more years of heartbreak and he could be at the point of no return, but then things started looking much brighter. To begin with, let's talk about the 2012-2013 season. Bayern as a whole was incredible. They ended the season with 23 consecutive wins, which as you might imagine meant they won nearly everything. Firstly, let's of course mention their greatest achievement, the Champions League. They didn't just win it, they decimated the competition, only losing once throughout the whole tournament to bait Borisov out of all teams and getting immense wins, most iconically a 7-0 victory over Barcelona. To further expand on this achievement, they would win the league, the cup, the European Super Cup and the Club World Cup to become the seventh ever club to win the treble and even complete the King Tupel. If only they hadn't lost the Super Cup to Dortmund, maybe they could have taken it one step further. Regardless, if there's any doubt over how essential Schweinsteiger was to this team, let me make sure to remind you that Schweinsteiger would win that year's German Player of the Year and be the fourth highest placed Bayern player in that year's Ballon d'Or, which is even more impressive taking into consideration that more offensive players tend to get the upper hand in the award. If this had been reason enough for Schweinsteiger to feel proud of his last few years at Bayern, 2014 would be the sherry on top of the cake. As summer came around, he would take part in what would be his last ever World Cup, and if so far his World Cups were always the close but no cigar type, this time he would go all the way and in style, including of course what might be the most playing time and winning yet another Bundesliga, he would finally be on the move joining Van Gaal's Manchester United for 9 million euros. If you recall this team, you know it did not go too well. In the final 18 matches of the season, they would actually only manage to win one single match by more than one goal. Over summer, he would take part in the Euro 2016, his last tournament for Germany, replacing Philipp Lahm as the captain of the squad, though he would only average around 45 minutes per match as he would watch Germany miss out on the final as they lost out to France in the semi-final. And if things weren't going too well for Schweinsteiger at Old Trafford, they would only get worse once Jose Mourinho arrived. As new coach, he would decide that Bastian did not fit into his plans, and though I'm not excusing this dreadful decision, it would actually demote him and send him to train with the under-23 squad. Though at a point he would manage to break into the first team once again, by March he would reach a mutual agreement with the club and finally leave to join Chicago Fire in the MLS. The first season there would be the most successful, reaching the playoffs only to get knocked out in the first round. From then on, he would have two largely unsuccessful seasons at the club and even getting a second to last place finish at a certain point before finally hanging his boots and ending a career that many players would envy. It's very hard to point out any flaws in Schweinsteiger's game. He could shoot from range, take set pieces, dribble like very few, provide crosses, tackles and even play in several positions. Either on the wing or as a box-to-box -box midfielder, the guy could simply do it all. In Germany they called him the Fußball Gott, and I find it very fitting. Players like him always left me speechless. Versatility might just be the most underrated aspect a player can bring to a team. It can be the one key change needed for a team to switch their game up and become 
become successful. Looking back on it now, I'm happy that his luck turned around and he managed to get the trophies he deserved. It would be a shame to see a player like him go out before getting some time in the spotlight. Yeah, at the end it was a great career, but now... Let's get into the ranking system. First of all, defensive traits. Impressive considering how great he could be in attack. A 7 out of 10. Then playmaking. An 8 out of 10. He certainly could create, but playing further back, he didn't get to show off this ability as much as perhaps he should have. Attacking traits follow the same logic as his most offensive side, though I think this part of his game had the edge, so it's a 9 out of 10. Speed and physicality was a good mix, something which is frequently found in well-rounded players, still it wasn't necessarily exceptional at either, so it's an 8 out of 10. His mentality was clearly one of his qualities, from his work rate to leadership, but I, I feel like he missed some edge that could have made him an exceptional leader on the pitch, so he ends up with an 8. Longevity and adaptability is tough. Though I don't blame him too much for his unimpressive time in England, he did seem to be struggling to adapt to a new league, and since his longevity wasn't anything mind-blowing, he gets an 8 out of 10. When it comes to flair, I've always personally found him to be very entertaining to watch, definitely edging most players with similar roles to his, it's an 8 out of 10. Then trophy cabinets. A World Cup and a Champions League is a rare sight, but not much on the individual side of things, and not much variety either, it's a 9 out of 10. Finally the icon factor. His retirement is still very recent in our minds, so it's a bit tougher to judge, but I honestly feel like given his role in the first half of his career, he will have a tough time maintaining a legendary status outside of Germany. Think it warrants him a 7 out of 10. This totals out at 72 out of 90, putting him level with players like Xabi Alonso and Seedorf, who has actually had his score slightly changed as I noticed I had made a mistake. Besides this, I would also like to show you that I've added George Weah's X-Factor to the ranking system, which you can now see on screen. And yeah, I think that's it. I hope you enjoyed. This was Bastian Schweinsteiger's career in a video, and yeah. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.